How you folks doing? My name is James. I'm out here at my homestead studio, my digital studio, and I love my creative mind when I come out to this place, even though I love my practice down in Santa Rosa. Today, I have another video that talks about how to optimize Emacs, particularly interior Emacs. I've always wanted to be efficient in my Cirque Clinical Theater, and this applies to Emacs applications, even if you're using other systems, and that is, I like to be able to fire them once for a number of reasons. Number one, when I'm in my clinical theater and I have a patient in the chair, I wanna be efficient in turnaround time without compromising quality and still staying within that realm of my creative mind and application artistically on that Emacs ceramic. So I'd love to pre-shape, texturize my ceramic, then place on my glaze before I fire it in the furnace. Now there's a number of glazes that will do that for you. This video is gonna be addressing Mio 850. And what I love about this glaze is that it makes your Emacs look so natural. It can be considered more of a brush on ceramic, particularly with the technique that we deal with in this video. It's about creating that beautiful incisal edge. With most of my Emacs enter restorations, whether it be a veneer or a crown, if I'm not having to block out a dark root, which usually means I'm using the prime, Zirconia now by Ivy Claire. And I will address that approach with some videos in the near future. But when I'm working with Emacs anteriorly, I'd like to use more of a translucent Emacs as long as I'm keeping it in a natural range and the color of the preparation is more natural, then I want more of a shine through. The thing with HT, which is my favorite, is if you do multiple firings on the HT, it can go low in value once you cement, and then that patient comes back and you just go, oh man, this is not where I wanted the case to go, and that's happened to me. But when you understand the material and how to work through it, it works really well, like on this veneer. She's a B1 range on her other teeth, so we used a BL2 HT, one firing using Mio 850, on that incisal edge to get that beautiful incisal effect to make sure it blends in with the rest of her mouth. I really like this approach. This video is one of the ways I do it. In fact, when you're using this technique, there's different ways to create different styles of incisal edges. As you see right now, there's different styles. We wanna blend it into that patient so it really blends well. This video is more of a generic approach where we're gonna use the incisal effect of smoke and storm to create that emphasis of lower value and then use the halo spring to get that nice contrast to that incisal edge. What we're doing here is the art of distraction is that we're working through a contrast technique to create the illusion of beauty and it works so well. So let's go ahead and get started with our anterior approach for Emacs restorations, placing on Mio 850, onto the pre-crystallized state and just getting an incredible result with just one firing. And that's what I love about this approach. In setting up our restoration for the glaze, we wanna add about 10 to 15% more texture than desired. Once that 850 glaze is added, it's gonna neutralize it just perfectly. And you'll see that in just a moment. There's nothing like texturing. It's the fingerprint. It's the chemistry of the case. Fill the restoration with object fix flow and overfill. Plunge in the dye pen. That should seal the margins. If you see any gaps, go ahead and tease that object fix flow into place so the margins are sealed. We want good support during the firing and to keep the glaze out. There we go, now we're ready to add our glaze. But before we do that, let's go through on managing our meal systems, whether it be the glaze or the colors, we wanna mix them appropriately. Use a non-metal spatula, thoroughly mixed to a homogeneous consistency. Every time the glaze or the colors are dispensed, you wanna check the consistency to make sure it's well mixed. To check the viscosity, 
string up the substance about 10 to 12 millimeters and that will be perfect. I find that the quality of this material is very consistent. With the Meal 850 kit, there's two brushes, a size three and one. The three is perfect for adding glaze. To form the brush, dip in the liquid and then rotate it on a two by two. That liquid will help train the bristles to stay in shape. You wanna do this before and after adding glaze. Pick up the glaze with the bristles and add to the restoration, horizontal along the cervical margins. And you will find one application with this number three brush will apply enough glaze to one surface of the restoration. The meal glaze is very special. What you will find is the pre-glaze luster is the luster you'll see after the firing with just one application. When adding glaze to the proximal surface, thin it over the contact zone. By doing this, we won't see binding when we seat the restoration. What we're gonna do next is add low value. So we're preparing that incisal edge. We want that glaze to be very thin on the incisal edge. With the brush number one in the 850 Mio kit, we'll use that to add colors. The next step is to start adding low value on the incisal edge. To add the value, we're gonna pick up smoke. We've preformed the bristles and we're gonna carefully float in the smoke one half millimeter from the incisal edge down the line angles. Carefully float the low value across the incisal edge and carefully extend the low value into the primary depressions. You wanna stroke it down about 15%. Don't go more than that unless the adjacent tooth that you're copying requires. The color smoke is our low foundation. In many cases, this is all we need. It adds a subtle translucency effect to that incisal edge, and it will look like it's embedded within the ceramic once this is fired. We'll go ahead and clean our brush and add our second accent to the incisal edge, and that's storm. The storm color is more of a blue lavender color. I like to keep it right incisal to the primary depressions. It amplifies the translucency effect. Storm can also be effective on creating the translucency on the line angles when the case demands that look. Go ahead and extend it down the line angle and it will just pop the incisal edge. As we start to see already, we see the halo effect with the low value. Lumen or Halo Spring will also enhance the halo effect. We're gonna add along that incisal edge, use that surface tension in the brush and just barely stroke it across the incisal edge. This is a technique. You'll see it just slightly enhance the halo and around the line angles when the case demands it. You wanna keep it really thin There we go. That's already starting to look great. And wait until you see the final effect. Quite often on the line angles where the enamel is thicker, you'll see the enamel appear slightly higher in value. We can do that with lumen. It is translucent, so it's gonna blend right into the ceramic. This will also highlight the mamelon effect. The next step for this exercise is pick up some dentinal shade to enhance the mamelon effect. Be very careful with this. On either side of the primary depression, near to the lower value striation, add a little subtle color. You almost don't see it, but it will enhance the mamelon effect. The interproximal framing is a technique 
that will make a tooth look more natural when we're going for the natural look. Be careful on bleach shades with this approach. We'll add the color cervically up to the contact zone. Keep it distal or mesial to the line angle. In many cases, I don't add a lot of cervical shade unless I'm having to custom blend in one or two ceramics. You will find by floating the dental shade just at that margin and feathering it into the mid body, it will look very natural and it doesn't blotch. The next step in this exercise is to pick up some snow. Now snow is very white. You gotta be careful with this. You can create some unique and sizable effects. Now, since I'm a dentist, I like endodontic files for this purpose. This is a size 15 file, and we'll take the tip of that file and we'll float and mix in the snow with the lumen and then stroke down that higher value to enhance the mamelon effect. With my craft of ceramics, I like to make things look natural. This is just for me. We're gonna add some dental shade to the fossa side of the central and we'll float and dilute that high saturation. And just for practice, we can add some lumen to the line angles. It will create a higher value where the dentin is thicker. This is fun. This is the craft of dentistry. Now we're ready to fire. We'll apply that to the appropriate tray. This is the speed cycle in the CS2. And voila, there you have one firing. Beautiful and sizable edge effects. Keep them very subtle, but most importantly, look at the texture with the glaze here. The glaze is just magical with the Mio 850. One application by adding 10 to 15% more texturing, once that glaze is placed on that surface, we'll get this beautiful effect. Thanks for spending time today. I sure had a good time. This material on Emacs has been phenomenal in my clinical theater. I'm now back to doing a lot of my veneer cases in one appointment, mainly because I can work through this process in a very predictable, efficient way. I am using the CEREC system, Prime Scan and Prime Mill. Prime Mill is extra fine mill. I like to design at least 90 to 95% of my restoration in the virtual space. That way, when it comes out of the milling unit, all we do is refine texturing, place on a meal and firing. It's really improved my time in a very effective way without losing my artistic edge. And that's really important to me. So if you have any comments and questions, make sure you post them below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe, hit like, and then hit that bell. So you're notified when that next video shows up on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye now.